is give me you. Come on, worship him. Everything else can wait. We love you, Jesus. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Come on, church. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Tell him, Lord, give me you. 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 It's me, oh Lord. I'm on my knees crying out to you. It's me, oh Lord. I'm on my knees. Give me you. Give me you. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Tell him, Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Come on, church. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Tell him it's me. It's me, oh Lord. I'm on my knees crying out to you. It's me, oh Lord. I'm on my knees. Give me you. Good morning and welcome, wonderful saints of God. My name is Hannah Mary Pinder, and I am so excited to be sharing the Word of God with you on this morning prayer broadcast with Pastor Sean and Amy Pinder. They are wonderful people, and they are great pastors, and I love them so much, and it is such an honor to be filling in for them today. My message for today is, this is the Lord's battle. This is the Lord's battle. This is not your battle that you will be facing. So uh, before I start, I'm going to quickly pray right now. Dear Father God, in the name of Jesus, open up our hearts and our minds, God, to receive your word. Let the word go forth so simple that even a child will be able to understand, God. Let your word be made manifest in today in our lives, this morning, O oh God, and help us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So um, I'm sure most of us are very familiar with the story of David and Goliath. Goliath was tormenting the Israelites for 40 days and 40 nights, and no one was brave enough to, uh, to fight him. So David went before King Saul, and he offered to fight the giant. So I'm going to start this uh, story at 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 32. David says, Don't worry about this Philistine. We can just park right there. God is saying, don't worry. Do not worry. I have everything under control. He's saying, this is not your battle that you are facing. This is my battle. You do not have to worry. John 14, 1 says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Just trust in God. It doesn't matter what you're facing. This is not your battle. This is the Lord's battle. He has everything under control. Joshua 1 9 says, This is my command be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Jesus is with you right now. He promises to never leave you, He promises to never forsake you. He is with you always. Jesus is with you in the midst of this battle. This is not your battle, this is the Lord's. So, uh, verse 32 says, Don't worry about this Philistine, David told Saul. I'll go fight him. Don't be ridiculous, Saul replied. There's no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy, and he's been a man of war since youth. 
But David persisted. David refused to give up. He was determined to do the will of God. His miracle was right around the corner and he was not about to give up now. Just because the door has been slammed shut in your face, it doesn't mean you give the towel and you throw the towel in and say, I give up, I can't do this no more. Sometimes you gotta try again. Do not give up because your miracle is right around the corner. Verse 34, but David persisted. I have been taking care of my father's sheep and goats, he said. When a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. I have done this to both lions and bears, and I'll do it again to this pagan Philistine too, for he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine. David's confidence lied in God. God had delivered David before, and David knew that God would deliver him again. If God did it for you before, God will do it for you again. Sometimes it's just great to rehearse the, the great things that God has done for you. It, it helps strengthen your faith to think on the great things, the good things that God has done for you. And so Saul finally consented. All right, go ahead, he said, and may the Lord be with you. Then Saul gave David his own armor, a bronze helmet and a coat of mail. David put it on, strapped the sword over it, and took a step or two to see what it was like, for he had never worn such things before. I can't go in these, he protested to Saul. I'm not used to them. So David took them off again. David knew that this was more than just a physical conflict. This was a spiritual battle he was facing. You can have all the armor on you want, but if you do not have the Lord with you, then that armor will not protect you from the attacks of the enemy. You have to have the armor of God on. David already had the best armor he could possibly have on. He had on the Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians 6.12 says, Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. In verse 40 says, He picked up five smooth stones from a stream and put them into his shepherd's bag. Then, armed only with his shepherd's staff and sling, he started across the valley to fight the Philistine. Goliath walked out toward David with his shield bare ahead of him, sneering in contempt at this ruddy-faced boy. Am I a dog, he roared at David, that you come at me with a stick? And he cursed David by the names of his gods. Come over here, and I'll give your flesh to the birds and wild animals, Goliath yelled. Goliath was cursing David by his false gods. He was trying to use his demonic powers against David. But David knew that he had somebody greater on his side. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And so David replied to the Philistine, You come to me with sword and and spear and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of Israel, whom you have defied. Just like Goliath, people will try to curse you. They will try to put their witchcraft against you. They can try to curse you with their demonic powers. They can try to cast a spell on you, but who knows that no weapon formed against you shall not prosper in every tongue that rises against you in judgment. It shall be condemned. If you are a child of God, and if you are bought with the precious blood of the lamb, ain't no devil in hell can curse you. Nobody can put a curse on you. No witchcraft can work against you because you are covered under the blood and you are saved by the Lord Jesus Christ. Ain't no spiritual weapon can come against you in the name of Jesus. And verse 46 says, Today the Lord will conquer you, and I will kill you and cut off your head, and then I will give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and to the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. Goliath didn't know yet, but he was in big trouble now. He put his mouth against a servant of God. He, he put his mouth against David and everything that Goliath said he was going to do to David, David did to him and more so. Touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. In verse 47, and everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescues his people, but not with a sword and spear. 
David knew where his confidence lied in. He was not depending on uh, any weapons. He, was not de he wasn't even really depending on his sling. He was depending on the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, this is the Lord's battle. This is the Lord's battle. And he will give you to us. If God be for us, then who can be against us? It doesn't matter if you are facing financial difficulties, marital problems. It doesn't matter if you are facing sickness and incurable disease. It, it doesn't matter if you are in court wrongfully. It doesn't matter if you have been fired from your job wrongfully. You can be at peace and have confidence in God and knowing that this is not your battle. This is the Lord's battle. The Lord is fighting for you. The Lord is on your side. You do not have to fear. You do not have to stress you do not have to worry this is not your battle this is the lord's battle verse 48 says as goliath moved closer to attack david quickly ran out to meet him when you have a problem you don't run away from your problem you run to that problem because you have god on your side and reaching into his shepherd's bag and taking out a stone he hurled it with his sling and hit the philistine in the forehead the stone sank in and Goliath stumbled and fell face down to the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone, for he had no sword. Then David ran over and pulled Goliath's sword from its sheath. David used it to kill him and cut off his head. The very thing that Goliath was trying to use to kill David, David used Goliath's very own sword to kill him and to take him down your giant is coming down i i don't care what you are facing right now the lord jesus christ is on your side and he is with you he will help you conquer your your giants he will help you conquer your troubles it doesn't matter how hard your situation is jesus is with you this is not your battle this is the lord's battle I just curse every single giant, every single Goliath that is coming against you right now in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. Every single problem they are facing, oh God, just help them. Help them to know that you are with them, that you are always with them, that you have never left them, that you have never forsaken them, that you are with them always, that it doesn't matter what problems they are facing. You are with them, oh God. You are there to de help defeat their giants. They can't do this in their own strength, God. Strengthen them, Lord. Strengthen them, dear Jesus. Strengthen them. In Jesus' name, amen. And I don't want to end this broadcast without giving someone an opportunity to give their life to Jesus. So if you want to give your life to Jesus, I just want you to pray this prayer after me. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I believe in you, Jesus that you died and that you rose again for me. I repent of all my sins and I confess with my mouth that you are my Lord. Forgive me for all my sins. Wash me in your blood. Cleanse me in your precious blood, dear Jesus. Save me, Lord, and fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, I am so glad to welcome you into the kingdom of God. Uh, now that you are saved, I want you to read your Bible every day. I want you to pray every day and uh, continue to watch these morning prayer broadcasts. It will help strengthen your faith. And if you live in the Dallas area, you can visit our church, Miracle Healing Center in McKinney, Texas. We love you all so very much. And don't forget, this is the Lord's battle. This is not your battle. You do not have to worry. This is the Lord's battle. God bless you. I'm asking 300 of you who have never partnered with this ministry or never done something significant. And you know this ministry has been a blessing to millions of you around the world. I'm asking 300 people to make a commitment for the next 12 months to stand with this ministry, and I'm asking you to do something significant to help us continue to preach this gospel around the world. 
We want to begin three nights of miracles in a few months, but we cannot accomplish this by ourselves. We need you to stand with us financially. We need you to make a commitment for the next 12 months to do something significant. And people, this is not a joke. This is not a game. I'm very serious about this. If you know you are able to do it and you can make that commitment for the next 12 months, I want you to do something significant for the next 12 months to help us do what God is calling us to do. You know me and Pastor Amy, we take these things very serious. To give in this offering, you can visit us online at seanpinder.net forward slash give. You can also give through the ministry app. You can also give through the ministry PayPal account. That address is paypal.me forward slash Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also give through the ministry Zell account. The ministry Zell email address is info at seanpinder.net. You can also give through the ministry Cash App account. The ministry Cash App address is the dollar sign Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also give through the ministry Venmo account. The ministry Venmo account is at Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also text to give. All you have to do is text the letters SPM to the number 45888 and a link will automatically be sent to you. You can also give by mailing your donations into the ministry. Just remember to make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pinder Ministries, P.O. Box 2726, McKinney, Texas, 75070. Listen, Maine Pastor Amy, we love all of you. We appreciate you. And a tremendous, a huge thank you to our, to our partners who make this broadcast possible to help us take this gospel around the world. We love all of you. Join us again on tomorrow morning for another morning prayer broadcast. God bless you.